Well, in South America, there is a folk tale. About God coming down and talking to a shepherd and a llama. Boy, let's go, let's go. And he gave llama the ability to speak in any and all languages. Sometimes he tries to steal the wine, so be careful. And he ordered the llama and the shepherd boy to go and gather up all the animals two by two. Come on, llama, llama, let's go. go and take go them away. to the top of the mountain because there will be a great flood. I know there's stuff in your way, but you can step. And he gathered everyone and he got them all on the top two by two. Good boy. The floods came and then when they receded, then God came down and took away the ability of speech. Hi, I love you. But did not take away the heart and the soul. consider myself the LeBron James of the llamas. <laughs> a lot of people that I know, they're just like, oh, cool, she has llamas. I don't really know why, but she has llamas. They just kind of understand it. I had to explain who my best friend is sometimes. You know, llama girl down the road, yeah, that's her. They don't pick on me meanly, but they do pick on me like, hey, what about your llamas are doing today? Like, have, have they spit on you today or something? <laughs> Janessa uh, grew up with llamas when we were in New York, and at a young age, she could go down to a playground, and we'd take a llama, of course, why not? We've been to llamas 25 years, she's only 16 now. She has a love for animals, that she really takes in tune with them. When they're stressed and sick, she really has a good rhythm with them. And a kid would come over, oh, wow, look at that. And Janessa would pop right up and say, oh, yeah, this is my llama. He does this, he does this, he does this. So that confidence has extended to her showmanship abilities. Last year, I made it to go to the Nationals, but I didn't go. This year, I'm going to try to beat the Nationals. And her confidence in being able to talk and present herself, present her llamas. I am a little bit worried because it seems like there's a lot more really good showers now. She's practiced a lot. There's been a lot of shows. We've been doing this years and years and years. So she's had a lot of chances to come in fourth. It pretty much starts now. <laughs> or third. I do have a lot of competitors. We're really proud when she gets second. Well, I have one. But it's when she gets first place that we're really, we're really happy for her. Hunter Snow is my one competitor. Um, I, I change out all the photos. I try like every two months to change out all the photos with new ones. And when I changed this out, I just had my first baby. So I put up all the pictures of him. And this is actually when I first bought his mom. That's his ultrasound. People always stare when they come in. They're like, you have an ultrasound? They're like, I didn't know you were pregnant. I'm not pregnant. It's my llama. People look at you really oddly when you go up and you say, yeah, I'm 15 and I have 18 children. But my animals are my children. You know, I don't have anything else. So these are my children. This is my life. Fun to move out of the way. This is the downside of having bottle babies because they constantly want to know what's going on. They're kind of astounded that you actually show llamas. They're like, wait a minute, you can show llamas? They're like, well, do you just show them like dogs and you just walk them around? I'm like, no, you train them and they do things and they go over obstacles. And by that point, they're pretty intrigued. People don't really understand when I tell them that I own my own farm, that it really is my own farm. It's not my mom's, it's not my dad's, it's my farm. It is really and truly solely her thing. If she so desires to stay in the llamas, there is another residence that we have that we will move back to. This is her farm. She intends to keep it and keep it running. I kind of have to look at it differently. A lot of people have llamas and they look at it like they do dogs, like pets, and I kind of have to look at it as a business. You two be nice. Hi, viewer. My junior herd sires are the ones that I'm showing right now a whole lot, so that then when I start to breed them, I can say that they are the son of a national grand champion. A 
of course, everybody wants to win blue ribbons, but for me, it's just about having a good time and knowing that I accomplished something more than winning blue ribbons. Because, you know, sometimes you're just not the best one out there and you have to accept that. No, we don't need to chew on that. Step down. Good job, dude. Janessa Hall is my biggest competitor, but whatever you do, that there's always a first or a second, there's always going to be a competition to it. Competition helps me work more and gain just a little bit better. But it always seems like wherever I go, she's always right there. that one show and so I was kind of scared to do it and yeah. I want her to win and be really good but it's just how she wins and her whole attitude towards it. Who's in advance? Congo? Yep. I'm always shooting for Grand Champion. I want to be a name that people are somewhat intimidated by in the show ring. That would be the ultimate goal there. just sort of happened over a period of around 30 years. Woo! Woo! Okay, everybody. And it's come a long way in those 30 years. This is one of the Mama's pastures. It's their little Machu Picchu here. Because nobody did llamas before. Nobody knew anything about llamas. You need some supplies, probably not this much, but we do surgeries here. We were a different kind of people. We were kind of gamblers. This is all llama fiber and primo cuts and a little bit of a renegade. This is called the man cave down here. Well, the hardware store in town went out of business, so I went down and made him an offer to buy the whole thing, and I got it for a really good deal. Nobody understood. Maybe we didn't either, what we were doing. But we were having a hell of a good time. It's really my wife's thing. I think if I sold the llamas, she'd probably be want to be sold too. Hi, baby. I don't leave the ranch. It's busy. You have to rush and rush and rush and do and do and do. You know, it's just everything. She's become like the llama mama of the country. it was going to get this big, but the problem is uh, llamas are like potato chips, you know, you can't have just one. Well, it really started when I just wanted to have some land in the mountains so I could get away from town. I searched for about two years and I finally found this remote, remote land. We got our pastures in and everything and Jack wanted to raise something. Uh, I said, do you, you, you want to raise some horses or something to eat the grass? And, or what do you want me to get? She said, no, let's get some llamas. I said, nobody raises llamas. And she said, well, that's a good reason to raise llamas. We built our home after we built our barn. First things first. We finally tracked down where to buy a llama. We bought one llama. Back then, we paid $100,000 for him. What justified paying that amount? Insanity. <laughs> Nobody knew anything about llamas, so this was an experiment from day one. Okay, where's the common sense? <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to do it on a big scale if you want to make any money out of it at all. You have to you have to do it big time. Everybody back then that we're, we're getting into them, we all paid those kind of prices. Female, it wasn't anything to pay 50000 for. The economy, the way it's dropped, it's not as good as it used to be. And the price of llamas has come way down. Thank heavens the price came down. Because we could never have probably sold any of them. <laughs> there would be hundreds of them out there. A lot of people got out, but we didn't. We stayed in because we still love the animals. And, there is, no, we do not make a profit, never have in all these years. The thing that keeps us going and just can't let go is the passion, the love, the passion. It becomes your soul. Your soul is entwined with them. 
Welcome back at 524. Well, you've heard of therapy dogs, even therapy horses. Did you see this? He's not what you'd expect to see at a children's center, but... That's because Tim rustled up something a lot bigger and hairier, spreading goodwill and comforting. Sure. Greetings, Rojo. You reach out and pet him. Hi, you're beautiful. <laughs> We can't walk 100 feet without people wanting to stop and pet him and ask why there's a llama in a top hat and why is he downtown Portland, Oregon. Hi, Rojo. <laughs> I love to share Rojo with everyone because llamas are really cool and it's really great people to share him with this big city. It definitely takes people back when I tell them that I have llamas and let alone kind of a local celebrity llama. Called the world's most beloved llama, Rojo makes regular visits to schools, hospitals, and charity events. We got Rojo in 2002, and then I showed him for 4-H until 2007, and that was when we got him certified for therapy, and so we've been doing therapy with Rojo ever since. The local comedian has a severe case of rheumatoid arthritis. Many days, Veronica can't even get out of bed. Oh my God, this is so, hi, I love you. A lot of people haven't interacted with llamas before, so it's a new, genuine interaction. And so you get all this, like, genuine emotions out of everybody. Mm. Yeah, huh. Portland is so weird, and that's why um, we love being here and sharing our llamas with Portland, because as weird as it is to have a llama downtown, everyone's super accepting of it, and they just go, yeah, Portland's weird. I want to hug a llama today. And they come right over and they kiss him, and it's great. I'm totally going to make out with this dude. What about this one? Come here. Come here. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, oh. Uh, I don't know. They're sweet. They're so nice. Oh, you guys are nice. We're going to go up along the Continental Divide. Uh, Bannock Pass just barely below 8,000 feet. And we're going to hike up into some pretty extreme country. We'll hit 10,000 feet. Dial, time low up on this side. Hiking 15 to 20 miles to set up a base camp is one thing, but then, you know, killing an elk, a deer, and a bear all in the same hunt and trying to pack it out and be an ethical hunter is pretty difficult. Uh, I want to brush them real quick just to get all the hay and whatever, um, you know, sticks or stuff that's inside of them. That way the saddles sit in there nice and they don't get saddle sore. We can take the llamas in and we can leave camp in the morning, hunt all day long, harvest our game, go get our llamas, pack out our meat, stay at camp while we have a few more days to hunt. We've got all of our sleeping gear, a tent, a wood burning stove, chainsaw, axe, all of our gourmet food, Supplies are starting to fire. Emergency kit, survival kit. And just kind of the essentials. Okay. It's pretty incredible what we can do. We can go farther, we can hunt harder, and we can stay longer with llamas. At the end of the day, You'll be dead tired and you'll look at your llamas and they're like, let's go some more. They'll be, they'll be pumped up wanting some more. A little llama ride, you know. There we go. Just holding up traffic here. Oh my goodness. Here we go. I'm uh, Ron Chinnick. I'm uh, a fellow that lives in Cuyahoga, Georgia, a little northwest Georgia town in southern Appalachia. And, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a llama farmer here, and I have uh, a few llamas. You got a sticker burr in your hair, man. It's disgusting. See, he's got pretty little bangs, so you know, you, you, you got to work on him. I'm the mayor of the town. Put on the, the parking brake and then you're, you're good to go. Good to conduct any mayoral business that happens to be needing attention at the moment. Mayor's office. I'm just a lucky guy. I'm just uh, living the dream, as some people say. 
I appreciate you guys knocking my rake over in the poop there. I like llama poop on my hand. I would describe my husband as crazy. You know, if you have a wife, you know, you're out swinging, hey, you know, she thinks, man, he still got it, you know. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, that's a, uh, my wife probably doesn't agree with that. <laughs> He's passionate about kind of different things than normal. I see you got hay all over you. With mom. I get tired of people asking me that question, how many do I have? I used to tell them the answer that he would say. It's really kind of bad luck to know how many llamas they actually have. So sometimes it's easier just to say we have 11. Do we really have 11? I really don't know. And uh, I just all know him by name. And that's how he is. He's just a passionate, caring person. He's passionate about the family, or children, or grandchildren, life, work, being mayor, that, that's just his personality, who he is. He dives into things 110%. I always wanted some llamas, but back in the early 70s, I didn't know where in the world you'd find a llama. So, you know, it, I just kind of rocked along for years and years, and one day I was, uh, I was watching TV here in Chattanooga and saw a public interest thing about llamas and this guy up on Signal Mountain. And I saw that and I thought, man, I have got to have me some of those things. They never once said, I don't think you should do this or you need to try something else. I just, in fifth grade, I walked up to them and I said, I want to show llamas. They said, okay, let's do it. When my mom first showed llamas to me, introduced me to llamas, I fell in love with this Kriya. Then my wife, was on a bowling league and asked one of the people next, you know, on the other team, so what do you do? Oh, we have llamas. Well, what are those? Five days later, we had two of them. It wasn't long before we had about 15 llamas. He was my first llama, and we went from one to four to 15 to 18. I spent $600 and bought my first two llamas and two packs and sets of gear, and then it was kind of, it's just unfolded since then. Here Rojo was, he was about three or four months old. It was his first time on a halter and on a lead rope and I got to walk him around and they had a mini obstacle course set up, just a little serpentine, a little bridge. And he just followed me around like a cute little puppy dog. And um, I just loved him. Right now I have 82 llamas. So I'd like to add, you know, another 20 to 25. I mean, when we had our first, we bought our first llama, I was perfectly fine working. I got to know my first llama about a week. I quit my job and that was it. I haven't looked back. And my wife, you know, she's an awfully patient lady. I, I know what she was thinking. She was thinking, oh no, here we go. And sure enough, you know, we ended up with a couple llamas and, and I, remember, I remember this distinctly that um, I, was, uh, I was looking out the kitchen window at the fish hatchery and we had two llamas in the backyard. I mean, they were right in the backyard. And, and I thought, what am I gonna do with these things now, you know? Well, eventually other people started getting llamas. We all got together and we called it a conference, but it was just a, a gathering because there weren't very many people. And we decided, well, we're gonna have a show, like dogs or horses. And that's how it all started. I'm Beth Myers, and I judge llamas, and I raise llamas. It's similar to other livestock. It's how correctly they can do each task, taking points off for things that they do wrong, like stepping out or backing up or too tight of a lead. We have three performance classes, which there's pack, which is basically going to a trail up the mountain or something. You have public relations. It's basically going to a park where you, like, you have to people pet your llama. And then you have obstacle, which is just crazy stuff. 
go through a noodle maze, just a whole bunch of random stuff. Good boy. Good boy. Step up. Step down. Come on, you got this boy. Come on boy, you've got a load. Yeah, you've got a load. Step up boy. Step up. Dippy, step up. Load boy. Okay. Sorry, Maggie, this day was over. It's all right. Don't okay. worry about it. There you go. I'll take him to the barn, please. Thanks. Not his best performance, but... <laughs> That's what happens when you get a tired mom and you try to show him. You don't play. It's an optional grooming show where you don't have to groom, but to me it gives you a little bit more of an edge. If you go in the ring and you have two animals that look exactly identical as far as placing first and second, and you have one that's really clean and looks really nice, and you have one that's covered in hay, kind of weigh your options, which one would you pick? First place, second place. Here we go again. Oh, sorry. We switched back and forth a lot, Hunter and I. <laughs> First place, Vanessa Hall, Woo! Congo. Second place, Hunter Snow, perfect, perfect. I school. told you, here we go again. Look Third at you. Place, Bailey Jones, oh, we do it all the time. We have ever since we started. We kind of just switch back and forth, and it's literally like points apart, and we go back and forth all the time, no rhyme or reason. Congratulations. Woo! Thank you. Look at you. We have such a good time competing, you know. It's not really a big rivalry thing. Turn your number around. Woman. It is a competition. It's either she gets granted one show, I get granted the next show. Twenty-seven months. Can we come behind you? show of the season, I think I did good. I think we've done pretty well, you know, I always think there's room for improvement, but I think we did very well. well Pongo didn't really place much at all, but I mean, it, people think there was 20 in our class, 20 or 14, I heard both. So he did pretty well in that, but. All right, let's fire it up. Out of bed, come on, let's go. Let's go. Uh, well, that's a great question. You know, the price of our first llama, you know, it's a little bit embarrassing to confess. You know, I feel like it's almost a confessional, you know. That, you know, I, I, I've gone into church and confessing stuff, but I, you know, I wasn't making a whole lot of money working for the University of Georgia and raising catfish and trout. 
I blew it off because first of all, we didn't have $15,000, okay? I thought, well, that's good, that's nice. Oh, it cost that much, okay, well, okay. That's fine and well, but we borrow the money. Dad gummit. Well, there's some more over here, guys. So I had to go out and try to peddle the idea to some potential quote unquote investors like, and you know, I soon found out that that wasn't really going to happen much. So then, then, then I got the brainstorm that I'd go to the banks, you know, and had this whole idea. Well, you know, I rocked along in that for a little while, you know, going to banks and getting refused and kind of kicked out and, you know, and they thought I was kind of nuts about this whole thing. Yeah, I know everybody's hungry this morning. Cold morning, chowing down, having a big time. Finally, I, I went to one bank and went in there to see the bank president. And uh, I thought, you know, here we go again. I know it. Hurry up, hurry up. Come on, Wally. And so I went in, saw him, and, uh, you know, I was waiting for the big rejection, you know, thanks but no thanks deal. Nothing like llama groceries in the morning. And he started telling me about his dad and that his dad w wanted to get in the charter fishing business. And so his dad was doing essentially the same thing I was doing, going bank to bank. Finally, somebody gave his dad a chance. And so I guess the bank president that I was at thought, you know, here's my chance to pay back just a little bit. You know, this guy in here talking about this crazy idea about llamas and making money with llamas, and I don't really know what llamas are. And, but he said, you know, I'll do it. And, you know, I about fell out of my chair, right, right on out. Everybody have a good night last night? You guys were hanging out in the barn, being lazy this morning, you know, and I went home to tell my wife, you know, and, and, and I, I think she thought it would never happen. Needless I, to say, I didn't write the check. Couldn't do that. She had a female. Pensy had a, a, little, a little girl baby, and, and uh, we sold that llama, paid off her loan, and, I mean, it, it could have turned into a train wreck now that I look back on it, but... I was, I had a weak moment. Do you regret that weak moment at all? No, sometimes you just gotta, if, if, if you sit there and you play life by cut and dry, black and white, then you're gonna miss out on opportunities. That's Piccolina right there on the right and Tantera on the left, that's her daughter. Yeah, it's interesting to watch this, the whole family relationship, because Molly out here, she's the oldest female right now. She's about 17, 18 years old. She's the, the matriarch of, of the whole herd out here right, right now. So she's um, quite a girl. Got, got her several years ago from Jack and Tracy Pearson, and uh, she's been really the foundation of the whole herd out here. <laughs> She never met a llama she didn't love, you know, so every place we went she could find a llama she wanted. But she's also bred a lot of really fine animals. She know she's got an eye for it, she knows what she's doing. And I think Tracy can actually talk to them mentally. And I don't know how it works, but it seems to work. And they get females get ready to have a baby, they'll come up and look in Tracy's face and look at her and look at her. And then they turn around and show her rear end. Okay, I'm getting ready to have this baby. Now you get busy. If they want help, they'll come and ask for it. Oh, perfectly normal birth. Afterwards, she gets the world. We're draining. Okay, now you introduce to mom. Okay, just a minute. And that was really a perfect birth. Ah. Okay, we got a little girl. Yes, this is your baby. Your baby. Okay, you little munchkin. In the wild, it would take maybe this long and they might have a little bit of grace period to lay there, but they're going to have to get up and get moving in a reasonable amount of time. And that can be for any number of reasons. It could be for cold. It could be for a puma. Because you would make nice lunch. 
Yes, you would. To be honest with you, right now, I don't even know who the daddy is. I have to look him up. <laughs> Um, I keep all the big ones over here, and the tall llama standing is the SSLA sweepstakes, and then the one in the middle was from Grand Nationals last year, that's my reserve. This one's a performance champion through ILR, and then that's a trophy from Houston for getting reserve high point youth over all the youth. I have had grand after grand after grand, and we actually have a big basket for the ribbons because we have so many. And we got a ribbon and a trophy, and that's what Albie got for winning Grand LFA World Champion. This one and that one are the um, SSLA Youth Futurity Awards. Well, we do a llama show pretty much every other week, and so that's three days every other week that we do showing. So that's a lot of time. My Youth Ultimate Youth Achievement through also once you get so many grands or reserves, you get an Ultimate Youth, and then you never have to qualify to go to Nationals again once you're an Ultimate Youth. I'm already qualified for the Nationals, so I really look forward to going. <laughs> my overall goal for showing is right now to get my boy Pongo into Masters and get a grand in Masters. It, it takes a lot of effort, because you have to go through Novice, and you have to go through Advanced, then you finally get to Masters. Advanced is really hard because sometimes they have a combined masters and advanced class. So I'm competing against actual masters. So I have to beat the masters to get to masters. So that's sometimes very hard to do. So it's a very continuous thing. Just to get a llama to do his very best. So many banners. I won this when I was 14, so that was really cool considering of how young I was. Well, actually my favorite ribbon up here is six. It was my first show that I went to. And it was like the first thing that I actually got that I achieved for. And that was a really big stepping point for me. These are the awards that we've won with our animals. Not all of them are Rojos. Um, probably a few of them are. Um, has all of his outfits for every occasion. Halloween. Birthday parties. Super, Super Rojo. Lana. He has all his top hat. These outfits were made from Project Runway winners. Rojo got to wear this fantastic cape one year, um, and I got to wear a matching one. It's really fun to see the llamas in it, because llamas are kind of swanky animals. I think every, you know, great fashion forward llama needs a great designer outfit. <laughs> Here, I got him. Here, give me Smokey. Give me Smokey. Oh, no, it's not over. Yeah. Normally. You need to turn him that way. Okay. So when we first got um, the animals, we just wanted lawnmowers, to be honest with you. And then we saw Rojo, yeah. and we thought it'd be really cool if I yeah. trained him for 4-H. And so we grew up together, he and I, going to all these... Um, shows and parades and like just being a part of the public and just showing everyone around him, us in the community how great llamas are. Look at him, he's so cute. When we were at the fair one year, someone mentioned um, that we should have certified for therapy and I had to go home and Google it and look it up right then because um, Rojo is perfect for that, despite not being a good show animal. Do you want their sink ones off? No, just leave mine. Cool. Rojo isn't an ideal llama. He's not breedable um, quality body structure wise. His body shape is awkward. His back is slant, it comes at a slant. His front feet are a little shorter than his back feet. He's overweight. But in terms of what he does for therapy, he is just perfect. So as a llama, in the llama world, he's not that great. Oh. There's in here oh, hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> what are they doing? He's 12 years old and we've never shorn the front part or the back part of his hair. It's something that children and the elderly can come up and hug. That brings up his presence. You jump out of the van, you bring him into an elderly home, he walks in and he is this giant ball of fur and it's awesome. The great thing about how big his hair is is that when he runs, it almost parts in the middle and he looks like Fabio. Like his hair just luffs in the wind and it's just... He's so handsome, if that's, I know it's really weird to call your animal handsome, but Rojo's a stud, so <laughs> works out. <laughs>
Go, there he goes. In the Inca culture, they had what's called a lamero, which is the person that he has his llama, he works the llama, it's kind of like a shepherd, per se. Come on, big guy. There he goes. Watch out, don't get stomped on. And so I've kind of studied what they've done and try to create that. Let's go, bud, let's go, let's go, let's go. Go, Kyle, go, Kyle. Go, baby. Go, baby. And I've actually never had an experienced packer ever lay down and give up on the trail. There's no give up in these llamas. That was about three and a half feet. Hard, crisp snow. They had to sink down to their bellies, push it down with their chest, and then keep going. Select breeding became a big part of the Inca culture some 3,000 years ago, and they started breeding for more muscle and more bone. And so today we have what the Inca call the cara, or si cara, or car car llama, which cara means the working llama, beast of burden. Hey, Kai, hold up. Oh, I see what's hanging up on it. Oh, it's wrapped all weird. There you go. Is it? That's what happens when you get going in the crazy snow and the llamas start jumping. Sometimes you don't notice the panniers and a good llama will balance the uneven pannier and just keep hauling ass. These llamas are taller than the average llamas at the withers, which is right above the shoulders, are 45 to 48 inches. And they weigh 350 to 420 pounds, which is a pretty large animal. And so they have more muscle, they have more bone, they have more definition, they have bigger loin muscling, they have better angulation in their bones. And so they can cover more ground with less steps more efficiently. Is the chainsaw good to go? Like gas up? Good to go. He's got to put on the chain. But we got to freaking hurry up. Okay. That's it's probably going to get dark in like a freaking hour. That storm's going to hit, and we're going to be screwed. Average run of the mill llama, you'd expect to carry 20 to 50 pounds three to five miles without complaint. And you know, that's in topography that's not the Rocky Mountains. And the llamas that we have now, it's 15 plus miles, 100 plus pounds, and in tough conditions, you know, in snow and rain and ice. I bet the wind's blowing even harder now. What was it, 52? 58.7. <laughs> We're basically sitting about negative 15, somewhere in there with the windshield, so cold enough. That's for sure. We got a weather warning. As you see this big cloud, we're gonna get some moisture. So we're trying to get to camp before before this weather sets in and we're gonna be in big trouble. It's, it's miserable. The knoll of the pine trees, we gotta go a mile past down that side of that knoll of the pine trees. So roughly about two and a half more miles to go. And we got some big snow banks to cross, so we gotta get we gotta get going. Llamas are the oldest domesticated livestock in the world, so they've been around a long time. Inca Indians built their civilization on the backs of the llamas. Well, if you look at them uh, on the high Altiplano, where they're from, where their origin is, the uh, males, when they reached a certain age, I think like six or eight months of age, the head male there that was breeding all the females would run off all the young males and all the young females and get them out of there because he doesn't want anybody challenging him. Yeah, well, they still do the same thing. You know, I think it's genetic. They can't help it. You know, everybody, when we first got into this, and this was 30 years ago, told us, you can't put the males together because they'll fight. We said, that doesn't make any sense because they're together in their natural habitat, so we put them together. The main thing is they have fighting teeth, and you have to cut the fighting teeth out of them, but it's no big deal. You just remove their fighting teeth. That way they can't emasculate their opponent. But they get out and they play llama games. They chest butt, they run, they chase each other. I've seen them out there, hardly, they can hardly breathe because they were chasing each other so much, but they're healthy. They're just, it's exercise, you know, they're working out all the time. Big muscle. Just, I'm dominant, you're dominant. Yoo-hoo, doe boy. This is a beauty. <laughs> and my baby. Doe 
boy. Okay, guys. Smokey Joe, over there. Tiago. Arte. Bravo. Metallica. Come on, boys. Let's dance. Come on, guys. What's the big deal? Okay, let's see, what do you want to do now, huh? Come on, let's go, go put your foot in the bucket. I don't really know how I train differently from other people, because I've, I've learned little tips here and there. I always like to observe people, so whenever I would go into a class and I wouldn't win, then I'd watch the girl that did win, and I'd go, what is she doing differently that I'm not doing? What is she doing differently that I could be doing? The one thing that I learned, if you're gonna train your llama, have a bond. So one llama with one person, and that works amazing. Stop. You just Walk have up. to have that Stop. bond. Ooh, I know, yeah. And all of my animals, before they learn obstacles, they learn a whole lot of trust. So all of my animals are taught first to let me lay on their backs and not move. Good boy. So whatever crazy thing you're trying to make them do, they normally do it, because they love you. <laughs> It's basically called the Rainbow Forest. Um, it's basically as many colors and as many things that can hit them boy, that you can put on there, so then they get desensitized with their face being hit and everything. And then they also have bridges over their doors to teach them to step up and on things, so it's kind of like three obstacles in one. Gate, bridge, and noodles. I go through until he has an obstacle that he's not good at. Okay, now that would be one they messed up on, so I'm going to do it again. Textures are a common obstacle too, so he goes from standing on something soft to standing on something hard, and then it makes a lot of noise, so that's really good to desensitize him to when he steps on it, it might move and it might make noise. Good boy. And he likes it because he gets to be taller than me. Hi, what are you doing? Okay, you want to do that one now? Stop, stop. Oh, you lazy llama. And then he gets verbal cues if I want him to do something specific. Stand. Pick up this foot. Good boy. Stop. <laughs> See, now I need to go through the obstacle again. <laughs> There's people that compete as youth that have been doing it that literally were born into llamas. And I started really late. So it was like, hey, go swim with the big kids now. I think it's because I was raised into it. So I've spent my entire life with llamas. During the summer when everybody else is sleeping till noon, I'm up at like six o'clock so I can come out and feed these guys when it's still cool. Well, I am a teenager, so I'm lazy for the most part in the summer. <laughs> it's kind of like I come out and I do my llamas all day long and then at 2 a.m. when I can't sleep, I do algebra. <laughs> yeah, well not every day. Um, like I said, I am a lazy teenager. <laughs> And so people kind of don't really realize it, but it really has prepared me to be an adult in the world instead of just expecting my mom to do everything for me. Like I said, mom's the one that does all the paperwork. She just tells me, well, you're showing Bandit and Jesse. I'm like, okay. <laughs> School, llamas, and sleep, that is my life. But I love them and they love me, so I at least hang out with them a lot. Tomorrow is the Perry Show in Georgia. Which is for the regional show. Hey, what's in that, Pongo? Uh, regionals, it's the kind of kickstart, I guess, to nationals. And I'm very excited to show there because it's the first time that Pongo and I are showing a Masters. We're very proud of her being able to be Masters at such a young age. We don't think anybody else uh, certainly no kids have made it at 16 years of age and trained their own llama to master's level. So we're very proud of that. Waking up this early is not fun. <laughs> but it is worth it for going to shows. I mean, it, it's, it is fun getting up early and going somewhere. They're looking into it. I am the only youth that has gone into masters while they were still in the youth, which is pretty much for the greatest and the best. Getting to masters has been very difficult. I have been working to get to masters for about three years. 
There has been times when I just wanted to give up because Pongo would have these terrible days when he just wouldn't do well at all. So I thought, well, maybe he just doesn't want to do this anymore. Maybe he's getting too old and he's just lost his spirit. But I kept at it. Pongo and I had those good days and we did it. We got to Masters. Cameraman. <laughs> Another letter? Uh, this is the envelope with all our paperwork to go to nationals. So, mom had a really fun time filling out Diamond and Masters now. That was her favorite thing to do, like so far this whole month. <laughs> It is officially in the mailbox, ready to go. Woo! What do you think some of the biggest misconceptions about llamas are out there? That they spit. That is always what I get. You have llamas, do they spit? Of course, that they spit. A llama ranch? What do you do with llamas? Don't they spit? And also, do they spit? And I was like, no, these guys know their manners. I have a running joke. Do llamas spit? And I said, only if you're wearing whatever color you're wearing. Llamas spit only when aggravated or irritated or it's a warning, but mostly on one another. People don't realize that it's a defense, just like a dog bites and a cat would scratch. They hear a lot of stuff about, oh, they spit all the time, they're gonna spit on me, but they really don't. It's more of aggressive, like you have to really make them really mad to spit at you. And I always tell them they always have three warning signs before they spit, so probably if you're still bothering them after the three warning signs, I'd spit on you too. And they don't really, <laughs> they look at me a little oddly when I say that. So only if you're wearing blue, only if you're wearing plaid, only if you're wearing pink, 100% of the time, the people will do this. I love that reaction. <laughs> if a human gets spit upon by a llama, generally on this ranch, it's because we're bent over and there might be an argument going on between two llamas and we come up and we get it. And then they go, oh, oh, we're sorry. We didn't mean to do that. The way that they've always been presented to people is just like if you Google a llama, you're gonna find a picture of a llama with its ears pinned about to spit on you. Like whenever people come up to me and they're like, does your llama spit? It's like, no, it can, but they don't. And I just feel like a lot of people get presented to them wrong or either try to do something that makes them angry and then end up getting the bad side of llamas. But they don't. If they're raised properly, they don't. And their mamas raise them. It's as close to the wild here in our ranch as you can get. It's a Yahoo moment most every day. <laughs> Especially if they can escape on the road and then it's llamas on the loose. Llama Watch 2015 here on Fox News Channel. Uh, do you see black llama and white llama since we took a break have now separated. Moments ago they had this black llama pinned against a fence then it is a Yahoo day and they love that. And I kind of like it too because I like them to get the better of humans and I like them to play tricks on humans. Uh-oh, uh-oh, doesn't want to be caught. Does not want to be caught. This is playtime. This is really fun. They're going on an adventure and they love to, to change fields or go different places. It keeps life interesting. Arms out but not flapping. That's the new, the new tactic. And oh, Llama Llama's head button. That is not good. They are so smart and they're so proud of themselves and it's just grand. They usually get their own way. And there the llamas stand. Why are we doing this, you may ask? Well, because we have live pictures of llamas. What would you do? This is going to be my first time showing in Masters. And I'm, I'm nervous. I'm just, I don't have 
time to go back to the stall. This, this that's is natural. No, no. That's, that's natural, I think. Good boy, back. Back, back. I just, I need help carrying the pack once I take it off. So if you can help me with that. Everything has led up to this moment right now. This is probably the greatest moment in my showing so far, ever. I, Dad does not put on this pack right. I'm sorry, Pongo. Okay, good boy, Pongo. And what they're really looking for is that it doesn't twist. Subject. He's very picky. Well, you know what? Then I'll ask him how he wants to do yes. it after the show. Absolutely, I think that would be good. Turn, 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 turn. Come on. Come on. Oh no. Step easy. Ha. Ha. All right, I'm gonna come on. Hip, hip. Up, 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 up. Good boy. Under, under. Good boy. May I touch the lava? Yes, you may. Oh, it was terrifying. When I had to tie him to take off the pack, my hands were shaking so bad. <laughs> but I am proud of him for the first time through. He did really well. I'll be happy if I get second, but I'm probably going to get third, and I'm okay with that. What we have in the senior walk through I'm hoping I do a lot better for you. Hopefully Bando can handle it a little better. He's younger. He can handle stress better. So we shall see. First place, we got Janessa Hall. First place, Janessa Hall. Second place, JG Hamlet. Woo! This is the public relations. So the first place is Janessa Hall. Okay, for regionals, the first place is Janessa Hall. Second place, JG Campbell. Third place, Hunter Snow. All yeah. right, congratulations, everybody. Way to go. Good job. We got um, several seconds, a first, and a couple of thirds. So. The second places I think were mostly in pack, and then I think there was one second in PR, and the rest were thirds in PR, I believe. I think we did quite well. She's she's only done performance like twice, so I thought she did very well for not have done it very long, because a lot of the other animals have done it a whole bunch, so I thought she did very well. That's you, yeah. Good girl. All right, everybody get ready. Press your buttons down. Your marks, get set, shoot the ball right now. Um, we're going to the fair to ride some rides and have a good time, pass the time. It's Although time she's terrified times. of rides, so it's going to be pretty interesting. Oh, I see buddy, him. sit back, all the way back. Oh crap, oh holy shit, oh holy shit. I'm sorry, I just cursed and I didn't mean to. Today's been a fairly stressful day going to Masters and Youth, but it's been a really fun time just de-stressing with the rides and everything. Well, I think everybody wants to win. I mean, we're all competitive in nature. I feel like sometimes you have to be more humble than competitive because you winning also means beating a really good friend of yours. So you know that they might feel a little bit disappointed or discouraged because they didn't win and they thought they should have. So, I mean, you take it in stride of having pride that you won, but also knowing that someone else out there didn't win. 
I mean, I think everybody really wants to win, mm -hmm. but at the same time, since we are really close, I also want her to win. So it's like, well, if I don't win, then I hope that she wins. But like everybody, I do want to win also. You just like sound but like what that, I that's just human. Huh? What? Huh? What'd you say? I, I, you said something. Yes, you did. Oh, yeah. I thought you heard what I said. I said yeah. you summed up what they are really great. I feel like they're great. I feel like Masters <laughs> goes to our first time in Masters, youngest one, Janessa Hall. So just won best of performance which is basically the highest that you can get I honestly still can't breathe <laughs> I am one the youngest in masters masters is the highest class you can ever get to it's for the basically the best and I just won best of masters. This is the highlight of my entire life. <laughs> Nobody was driving llamas in the south. Nobody, you know, people were walking llamas and doing stuff, you know, and, and people thought it was the coolest thing ever, you know, instead of walking a llama and leading him like, like a dog, you know, that the llama could actually do all the work, you know, the height, the blaziness, you know, which is kind of my thing, you know. Such a beautiful day in the neighborhood. There, good boy, Charlie. I can remember when he first decided that he was gonna buy a cart. He just saw it in a magazine and thought, that is the coolest thing ever. I have gotta do that. And of course, I'm naturally irresponsible and- And he just bought it. You know, and I thought, you know, bada boom, bada bing, here we go, you know, I'll just hop on this cart and zoom off we go, you know, into history and fame and fortune in the llama world. He wrapped himself and the cart around the tree the first time he hooked it up. Bent the wheel on my new cart, you know, so it kind of had this wobble thing, you know, going on. And it was kind of a breaking in him and breaking in the llama process. But it all worked out again, you know, I just, uh, and that's my niche in the llama world. Dun, 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 dun. To see the progression, it's kind of went to the school of hard knocks to the point where he trained a grand champion in cart driving in the nationals and wrote a book about it. So, I mean, I think it's tremendous. I've kind of become the de facto Dr. Doolittle around here, you know, because I, I will drive llamas up and downtown. You know, it's kind of back to nature. There's not the sound of a motor roaring. You know, I don't have to go to the gas station and pay three, four bucks a gallon. And I can just go get a bale of hay and, and uh, feed my llama and, and off I go, you know. It's just really calm and peaceful. It creates a little stir too, to be honest. I mean, I'm just kind of getting back to nature a little bit and enjoying the good life, you know? I mean, that's what I like to do. Oh, shit. There we go. Come on, Lauren! Come on, Lauren! Woo! Hey, hold up. What? Hold on. Oh. What's the matter? His, his saddle just keeps sliding off. The back strap's not on! Hurry! What? Bo, grab him! Whoa! Are you okay? Hey, hey, come grab this. Bo, are you okay? Yeah! Just kidding. 
We had a train wreck. Don't put that on the hey, video. Hey, how did that happen? Huh? How did he come undone? I don't know. I need your help, Kyle. Just grab Opus. Just grab Opus. Where's Opus? Right there. Here? I got it. Got him? Yeah. Are you okay? You didn't get stomped on? No. I did, but I'm fine. I think I take this is the deepest snow I've ever taken him through. Is he laying down? No. There we go. Oh, oh Stan. <laughs> Kyle, aim for the bushes. That will help. Just that, those small pines? Yep. Keep an eye on my on the panniers. This one keeps freaking slipping. I don't know why. Okay. Give her hell. We gotta hurry up. I'll watch your panniers! Alright. Good boy, let's go, let's go. There we go. All right, all right. Good boys. Good boys. Hey guys, camp's just right over there. So we'll just, once we get there, tie the llamas up on the trees, and then we'll start unloading all the gear. Now the problem is we've got to find some firewood so we don't freeze tonight. Yeah, luckily we we made it in time. We got here right before dark. Almost got the tent set up. Try to get the fires go fire going for our coal so we have something to cook our food with. Llamas did exceptional. We put him through some tough stuff. I put him through a lot of hard things, uh, but the crisp snow and as deep as it was, that was as deep as snow that we've been through but it also was the toughest snow because of how hard it was. And so it really was unforgiving, but they did really well. Since the Prairie Show, we have found out that Hunter is no longer competing at the Nationals. I'm very disappointed. I was looking forward to competing with her and she's just kind of, I don't know, I feel like she let me down also. Goodness, guys, mess up the gate. Because I, I was looking forward to competing with her and just having fun and seeing who gets the overall highest points. Well, it, it started out out of the very beginning that we were really close friends. I don't know, she became more competition driven and she was more of winning all the time that she just kind of we kind of lost our friendship a little bit. When Hunter and I went to the fair it was really fun. It was fun just being crazy teenagers and not worrying about any competition whatsoever. So I was hoping that you know getting back together and being more interactive with each other we could get our friendship back together but not being able to really do stuff together, it does affect that a little bit. I, no, I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna do my best, and whatever she does, she does, and whatever I do, I do. Hey boys. So, when we got llamas, they're kind of the awkward thing to have. So I didn't tell a lot of people when I was doing 4-H and stuff because 4-H is kind of known for being nerdy. Um, it's kind of like admitting you were homeschooled. So both of those I kind of kept secret for a long time. So when I finally got confidence in high school and I started sharing him with everyone, I kind of realized how big of a deal these llamas are. And that definitely changed dramatically in my life. From my junior year of high school to my senior year of high school, realizing that and growing that confidence um, really helped me push me on forward after high school to be like yeah let's share him with the community let's get him certified for therapy um, because he is actually a really cool thing and once I realized that I could share with other people to realize it too it's kind of funny I got my daughter here hey boys Rojo's always first So we're at a sensory camp for children with autism and special needs. 
Rojo's gonna be a cowboy today, and Smokey's gonna be a pirate. Kids can come over and bang on him and then calm themselves down. That's Smokey. Hey guys. Hi. Come say hello. You can be sure that's what John said. There's a small pumpkin patch and a haunted house that is frozen themed, so it's not so scary for the kids. And then the kids can actually walk the animals around, pet them, kiss them. Say, come on, Rojo. Come on, Rojo. There you go. And just have a little bit of um, sensory time to hang out. There you go. You're going to turn into cows? That'd be really funny. Give him a hug. Since it kind of just fell in our laps, we kind of have realized how perfect of animals they are for therapy. First of all, they don't have top teeth in the front of their mouth, so they use their split lips like fingers to take carrots, so you never have to worry about them fighting any children or anyone at all. I love the challenge of seeing anybody that is afraid of these large animals come and slowly move closer to pet them and then um, move closer to hugging them and then see the joy come over their faces once they finally overcome their fears and realize that these are just gentle giants. One thing I love about what we do is that everyone remembers Rojo. If they don't remember me, they don't remember my mom, they remember Rojo. Can you give them big hugs? You ever give him a big hug? Give him a big squeeze. You want to touch? Oh, look, he's so soft. So soft. I'm almost in the background, almost always. I'm just the person that holds the lead rope, and Rojo gets all the interactions, and Rojo brings all the emotions from people. Here you go, Robbie. <laughs> oh, Rojo. And so it's really cool to be there for everything, but almost be in the background of everything. Good job, Robbie. You know, people remember. Oh, that was Rojo, and I don't remember those other, those women were there too, but I remember their names. And that's um, what my mom and I was like, favorite thing to be a part of it, but not really be a part of it. Once I can uh, myself personally settle down and have a small farm, I want to get a baby specifically to train and document all of that. I want to show everyone, and so that way if, when Rojo dies, um, We'll have a giant funeral, and all of his llama friends will be there, and all of his Portland friends will be there, and we can all remember how great of a life that Rojo lived and how much he's touched everyone. But then there are others. There are more generations besides just him. Because llamas are addicting. They're so cute. So there will always be another one that you'll bond with. I think the worst things about having llamas here is having to let go of them. That means sell them. How do you do that? Well, you have to look at the person that's inquiring. And you look at their heart. You look at their soul. And if they're really good, they can adopt one. In my own mind, that's the only way that I can justify letting one go. Is it for the price tag on it? Well, that's most helpful, yes, but it's not the reason. So will you ever just flat out tell somebody that I don't have any llamas for sale? Yep. Yes. Why? If they don't have it here. I thought the Disney movie was bogus. You know, I, I went to see that thing and that's really not what llamas are all about, you know? I mean, llamas are really all about, you know, there's a, you know, without being too corny about it all, and really, I, uh, there's a spiritual connection with llamas. And I mean, I know that sounds corny to people and you know, they think, well, he's just, you know, that's just kind of weird. I would say they're God's pets. They are so smart. They know when they're in an environment that they have to totally chill out and the kids are going crazy or pulling on them or yanking on their tail. The llamas just take it. I've never found a dog that could do that that well. They seem to understand, they understand people. They understand the human element and, and what we're all about. 
So that's why we fell in love with them. What does your family think of you? Quite odd. Quite odd. Like, why? You work so hard and you love it. It can get really dirty, it can, you know, and you love it. Why? Well, it fulfills a, a, a place in, in your being, in your soul. It's wonderful, it's healing, it's good. Lamas are spiritual. And they'll teach you to be the same way. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say for Masters at Grand Nationals. I took seven, eight years to get here. No word can describe how it feels right now. <laughs> right now because I want to do really good. I'm, I'm ready for it, but at the same time I'm not. <laughs> My goal is to win everything that I'm in. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> take off the coat and the rain lockers, put them, fold them, and then put them on the table inside the tent while the llama stays in the hula hoop. Then you take off the pack. Yes. Okay, expect me to ask those same questions when we get to the next thing. 
I got it on video, but I can't hear it. Yeah, my phone has too much space on it. Oh, gee, should have used mine. All right, you're ready to go. <laughs> Good boy, Pongo. Go over and kick some butt. <laughs> He's standing pretty good. Really? He's certainly calm. They're putting a raincoat on him. All right, he behaved himself. Now we have to do the weave. Hello, goat. Hello, deer. Hello, chihuahua. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I know. Bongo stepped out again. Get a point off for that, but they finish the rest of the course. Okay, Pongo, calm down. Step in. Stay. That's all that counts. He's walking funny. He knows he's got something on there. Good, 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 good. Walk faster, walk faster, walk faster. Oh, boy. Then you go in the tubes. Through the inner tubes. Then you around go around the cat, the cat as really close, close as you can without knocking it over. Yeah. Okay. Are we okay? We're gonna ace this, right? Good boy. Easy. You can step down. Easy. Okay. You ready? You ready? Hip. 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 Under. Under. Good boy. What just happened was I just got down through pack an obstacle. I feel pretty confident in the third one because I love PR, it's my favorite. And so I think I'm gonna do a, a lot better in PR. Okay, Pong, come on. Yeah, you can try. Up, up, easy, easy. Stand. May I please touch your Yes, you may. Boy, back, turn, 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 turn. Don't be sassy with me. Don't knock over the tent. Back, 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 turn. Well, we're gonna finish it one way or another. Ha, 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 ha. ha. Yes, it's coming off. I'm just really hot right now. I know, it is muggy. I'm very proud. There was no big refusals and there's... <laughs> you haven't eaten either, have you? I had a cookie. Cookie's not good. It went okay. Not, not my greatest. But you know what? This is my second time in Masters and I think for the difficulty of the courses, we did, we did pretty good. I'm not expecting high placings. I would go seventh, eighth place. There's 11? Ninth? <laughs> yeah, first place. <laughs> he was just making sure I was okay. Is that it, the alpacas? Yeah, that's, well that's it for me. Costume time!
wig is itchy, I can only imagine what you feel. I know. I know. Don't get too close. I know you're like, are we done yet? Are we done yet? I don't know. Are we done yet? Are we done? Yet? You can't see me at all, can you? So in first place we have number 299, Sir Spotsalot Pongo with Janessa Hall. So one more big round of applause for our youth They usually announce all the classes just all at once, but they are only going to announce the placings for PAC and PR, and tomorrow night they're going to announce the placings for Obstacle. After these two classes have been placed, I still won't know if I've gotten Grand or Reserve. It, it could really go either way. In 2011 at the Grand Nationals, they had a showmanship class that was 11 people. They placed up to 10th. And so I go through my head all the bad stuff that I've done, like, oh, I could have done that better. As they were placing us, I'm like, okay, well, that's awesome. I got, like, above 10th. And then they got to 5th, and I'm like, oh my gosh, why did I, why did I get 11th? What did I do that was so bad? And then, they got to first and they called my name and it was like, holy cow, what did I do that was right? <laughs> it's like, I don't know what I did that was so wonderful that made me place first at the Nationals. <laughs> okay, pack class, 10th place. Goes to 241 Rumple Teaser. In ninth place, number 125. <clears throat> In eighth place, number 165, Stage Stop Silver Bullet. In seventh place, number 164, Grand Valley's Avalanche. In sixth place, number 175, Toledo's Chili Mac. In fifth place, number 299, HF Surf Spots a Lot Pongo. <laughs> Second class in masters ever, and I did this good. I thought I was gonna get 11th. <laughs> I honestly thought I was going to just blow it. <laughs> and this is, this is the greatest moment of my entire life. <laughs> They just bring it out in you. They know when you're down, and they bring you back. They're healing, and you develop a passion, a real passion. Fifth place, number 299, HF Sir Congo, Janessa Hall. The thing that people enjoy about a llama is the fact that they are intelligent. I won reserve grand in senior youth and top five in performance 
in Masters. So I'm so happy. They're very personable, but you have to earn their trust. I'm in heaven still, you know? Just, she amazes me every time. We've had our work throughs, but we've also seen the rewards. But she keeps trying to keep going and look where it gets her. You have to earn their trust. Once you earn their trust, they're your best friend. Llamas because who doesn't love llamas? <laughs> Like a 